This is what a $40 billion energy mega project looks like. The single largest private sector investment in the history of Canada. And possibly one of the largest ongoing construction projects in North America. It may turn the town of Kitimat into one of the biggest industrial hubs of Canada. Thousands of high-paying jobs have been created, injecting lifeblood into the local economy. But amidst all the excitement, a question looms large. Is this colossal project truly necessary, especially in light of modern environmental concerns? Is the world still going to require LNG after this project is finally completed? Let's find out. All right, let's break it down. What exactly is this enormous project that involves excavating half of British Columbia for? Well, the natural gas industry has discovered enormous untapped reserves nestled deep within the Montney Basin. Natural gas, despite being categorized as a fossil fuel, is considered to be somewhat environmentally friendly as it produces less emissions of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides or particulate matter. LNG also has a high energy density, which means that it can store a lot of energy in a small space. This makes it a good choice for transportation and storage. In this context, the LNG produced by Canada not only provides a viable energy solution, but also aligns with global efforts towards a more sustainable and cleaner future. So these vast deposits hold extraordinary potential for economic growth over the next few decades, especially as countries move away from using coal in order to become more environmentally friendly. The absence of a large population centre in close proximity to Motney Basin means that conventional methods of distributing the gas are inadequate. The gas needs to be extracted, processed and shipped. First part of making this a reality is a 670 km pipeline known as the Coastal Gas Link, which is going to stretch all the way from its source in Dawson Creek to Kitimat. The most recent update on the Coastal Gas Link pipeline construction is that the project is nearing its completion phase. As of the last update in September 2023, the pipeline is 98% complete. Once operational, the pipeline will be able to transport up to 5 billion cubic feet of liquid natural gas per day. This natural gas in Motney Basin is extracted via a process called hydraulic fracturing or fracking. This involves injecting high pressure fluid into a gas well, creating small fractures in the deep rock formations which allow natural gas to flow freely. The gas is then collected, processed to remove impurities and pumped through the pipeline, where it will arrive in Kitimat to be turned into LNG and possibly shipped across the world. So this means that the second phase of LNG Canada's project is the 18 billion liquefaction and storage facility in Kitimat, where a new terminal for LNG carrier ships will also be constructed at its ports. LNG carrier ships will travel along the Douglas Channel to load LNG in Kitimat and then sail to destinations in Asia. When completed, LNG Canada will likely be the first Canadian terminal to export LNG overseas. LNG is very much in demand, especially in countries such as China, India and Indonesia, which still have heavy reliance on coal and are actively seeking more environmentally friendly energy sources to reduce their carbon footprints. So Canada's west coast offers significant shipping advantages by being relatively close. For example, when it comes to shipping to Japan, only Qatar's costs are estimated to be lower than Canada's, with LNG Canada being able to deliver more cheaply than Russia or West African suppliers. Another interesting fact is that liquefying gas in frigid climates is easier than in hotter regions. Average temperature in Kitimat is 7 Celsius. Furthermore, inland gas transportation and liquefaction performance is better in the cold Canadian winter, when global markets increase their demand. Russian LNG benefits similarly from its cold climate, but struggles to reach Asia by ship through the North Sea route during winter months. The main drawback of the project is the overall cost. 
LNG Canada project is significantly more expensive to complete than any similar projects located in the United States, for example. The main culprit is simply the remoteness of the location. The construction of the Coastal Gas Link pipeline was estimated to cost around 6 billion Canadian dollars initially. However, recent updates have revealed that the cost has more than doubled to 14 billion. Several factors have contributed to this increase, including difficulties in attracting workers, the terrain where the pipeline is being built is diverse and difficult, the COVID-19 pandemic and protests from environmentalists and First Nations have further disrupted the construction schedule, leading to escalating costs. The environmental cost must also be taken into account. For example, in December 2020, the Provincial Environmental Assessment Office discovered that CGL hadn't properly followed erosion and sediment control measures, posing a risk to the health of waterways the pipeline passes through. It also poses a risk to fish habitats, as sediment and turbid water from waterway construction could harm aquatic systems and fish eggs. So despite the existence of various methods to safely move the pipeline through waterways, with man-made trenches and trenchless crossings where the pipeline goes under the waterway, this has harmed many lakes, including 68 wetlands, and even caused disruption in Fraser Lake. The Wet'suwet'en people have also faced obstructions to their traditional hunting and gathering routes, known as traplines. This has caused a significant disruption to their way of life, leading to ongoing protests within the area of their territory ever since 2010. Another concern has been the establishment of temporary housing units, referred to as man camps, primarily inhabited by male construction workers. These camps have raised safety concerns for the women of indigenous communities. Overall, the Coastal Gas Link pipeline has become a microcosm showcasing tensions between resource exploitation and the rights of indigenous people for self-determination over their territories. So the big question on everyone's mind is, is it too little too late? Is the world on a path towards only using renewable energy? Not quite. You see, natural gas is used in quite a lot more ways than just fuel for heating your home. It is also a crucial component in a wide array of chemical processes, such as the production of fertilizers. In the cosmetics industry, for example, gas serves as a base for various products, such as creams, lipsticks and perfumes. Not to mention the packaging of materials that protect our food to the components that make up our smartphones. Natural gas-derived plastics are everywhere, becoming more and more prevalent with time. By the end of 2017, 19 countries were sending out liquefied natural gas and 40 countries were importing it. The top three exporting countries were Qatar, Australia and Malaysia, while the biggest importing countries were Japan, China and South Korea. The trade of LNG went up from 142 million metric tons in 2005 to 290 in 2017. At the same time, Qatar became the world's largest LNG exporter, supplying over a quarter of the world's demand. The United States only started investing in LNG export facilities in 2016. Exports to the European Union increased following a US-EU agreement in 2018. And since 2022, most of the gas produced in the United States has been going to Europe. And according to McKinsey's report, demand is expected to increase by 3.4% per annum until 2035, with some 100 million metric tons of additional capacity required to meet both demand, growth and decline from existing projects. The growth of worldwide gas demand will likely start slowing down after 2035, reaching its peak in 2037, after which it may begin a slow decline. And LNG specifically is expected to grow the most when compared to domestic gas pipeline importation flows, growing from 13% in 2020 to 23% by 2050. Peak LNG demand is expected to arrive only in 2046. So currently, the LNG Canada project is on track to start production in 2025, in which case it may still have over 20 years of production time before reaching peak LNG demand and market saturation. While I am not an economics expert, LNG Canada appears to be a prudent investment.
given these figures and estimates. While the world may be moving away from carbon-based fuels, realistically, it's unlikely that the green energy revolution will have a major impact on the profitability of this endeavor. This $40 billion project has undeniably injected substantial financial benefits into the local economy, creating a ripple effect of prosperity, providing high-paying jobs for thousands of Canadians over the span of many years. Canada also has an enviable reputation for creating facilities that excel in terms of efficiency, environmental impact mitigation and safety. And as such, Canada is one of the best places for such a project to be built. The biggest mistake that could be made at this point is further delay and cost, at which point Canada's competitive advantage may no longer be able to overcome the cost of construction. Let me suggest checking out my video comparing Canada to Russia. Click in the middle of the screen. And this is my Patreon map. Everyone on this map is a legend who supports the show directly. Thank you guys for your support. Geoperspective out.